The definition of sepsis is a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to an infection. In sepsis, the body's response to the infection ends up causing damage to the organs, eventually leading to failure of the organs and death. It's important to know that not all patients with infections have sepsis, but any infection has the potential to lead to sepsis. In general, the organ dysfunction from sepsis results from increased metabolic demands combined with insufficient circulation. This means increased demand and a reduction in supply. It's normal for an inflammatory response to be generated towards an infection, but this tends to be localized. It includes the innate response, release of cytokines, and recruitment of inflammatory cells like neutrophils and macrophages. In sepsis, however, this response is dysregulated, which doesn't necessarily mean excessive, but it is enough to impair normal functioning of the body. We said that circulation is compromised in sepsis, and this is where knowing some of the physiology makes sepsis much easier to understand. The components that affect blood circulation are the cardiac output, given by the stroke volume multiplied by heart rate, and the systemic vascular resistance, which is the resistance blood encounters in the blood vessels, also known as afterload. When these two are multiplied together, they roughly provide the mean arterial pressure, which is a major determinant of perfusion and therefore delivery of blood to tissues. One of the main features of the dysregulated immune response is release of nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator, producing systemic vasodilation involving both arteries and veins. The problem with this is less venous return of blood, known as preload, and so a reduced stroke volume and therefore cardiac output. In an effort to maintain the cardiac output, the heart must therefore beat faster, and in the early stages tends to accomplish this. However, left untreated, it will eventually fail. The vasodilation also affects the arteries, reducing systemic vascular resistance. Put together, this means that the mean arterial pressure is reduced, and this lower blood pressure can therefore result in reduced perfusion to organs. And when hypotension is severe enough, it is defined as septic shock, which is a form of distributive shock. On top of this, nitric oxide can also reduce myocardiocyte contractility directly, thereby reducing the ability of the heart to pump blood effectively. And sepsis features increased vessel permeability, so fluid can extravasate and further reduce the circulating volume. There is also an increase in procoagulant factors and a reduction in anticoagulants, which generates a coagulopathy. Ultimately, this results in formation of thrombi, particularly in the smaller vessels, further impairing blood flow through the capillaries to the tissues. Red blood cells can even become less flexible, and so cannot as easily deliver oxygen to the tissues. So this can mean even if an organ is perfused, delivery of nutrients and oxygen can still be impaired. In most cases, a bacterial infection is the source, with Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas, and E. coli being isolated in over 50% of cases. But it can be due to viruses, fungi, and parasites as well. Lower respiratory tract infections, like pneumonia, are the most common primary source of infection, followed by the abdomen and urinary tract, but can be from any source. And in the elderly, the urinary tract is the most common source. Sepsis is sometimes referred to as septicemia, which means poisoning of the blood. But the blood does not necessarily need to be contaminated to cause sepsis, but is infected in around 15% of cases. In up to one third of cases, no source of infection is found. Certain factors increase the likelihood that an infection will lead to sepsis. For example, older age above 65 years, or those who are very young, or an immunocompromised state, like the presence of malignancy, 
anti-cancer medication, or steroid use. Others include recent surgery or invasive procedures, indwelling catheters and lines, diabetes mellitus or hemodialysis, alcohol or drug use, and even pregnancy. Sepsis has an extremely varied presentation, usually featuring some source of infection with its own features, for example a cough in pneumonia. A fever is usually present, but it does not have to be. For example, in the elderly, this may be absent. And remember that hypothermia may also be a manifestation of sepsis. Other possible features include tachycardia, tachypnea, altered mental status or slurred speech, and a reduction in urine output. Overall, it is a clinical diagnosis based on the presence of an infection and organ dysfunction. The SERS criteria, or Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome criteria, were previously used, which included two or more of the SERS criteria, examples of which include a temperature above 38.3 degrees or below 36, tachycardia, tachypnea, hyperglycemia without diabetes, altered mental status, or a high or low white blood cell count. However, more recently, there has been a shift away from using these criteria and instead using the SOFA score, which stands for Sequential Organ Failure Assessment. This was devised for use in the intensive care unit to determine the extent of organ failure in sepsis patients. It generally requires a score of two or more, or a change of two, to indicate organ dysfunction and therefore define sepsis. This score is based on six parameters reflecting the cardiovascular, respiratory, renal and liver function, the conscious level, and coagulation. Initial scores of 10 or higher indicate a 50% mortality, while scores of 14 or above are associated with a 95% mortality. A condensed version of the score, called QuickSOFA or QSOFA, including tachypnea, altered mental status or reduced conscious level, and systolic blood pressure below 100 millimeters of mercury with two out of three of these indicating the need for further investigation as it highlights potential sepsis patients with a greater risk of adverse outcomes. For septic shock, the definition is sepsis with coexisting persistent hypotension, requiring vasopressors to maintain a mean arterial pressure above 65 and a serum lactate above 2. There is a low threshold to begin treating for sepsis, the initial management of suspected sepsis is based on six steps known as the sepsis six. These are divided into three things to give and three things to take. The three to take are blood cultures, which ideally are before antibiotics are given, but should not delay delivery of antibiotics, bloods including a lactate level, and the urine output needs to be measured, most reliably through insertion of a urinary catheter. Generally, empirical intravenous antibiotics are given, as well as intravenous fluid. The fluids are crucial in counteracting the physiological effect of sepsis because it helps to restore the preload and ultimately the circulation. Oxygen is also generally given. Additional measures can include vasopressors, followed by ionotropes, in patients not maintaining adequate blood pressure with IV fluid resuscitation.